Welcome to Muller Time, episode 14. We're up to 14, right on. Now, as you guys remember from last week, I did attend the Donald J. Trump School of Math. So 14 is one, that's one higher than 13, but one less than 15, right? Um, okay. Dude, <laughs> I probably had no point there, but I was uh, just trying to, you know, we do, in improv, we, we do that, we call that a callback. All right. Anyway, uh, so I figured um, first we got to get to the, the Mueller news. There's two more indictments. I'm sure you saw that. Okay. Um, no, because I'm more worried about whose hands world peace is in right now, but let's do Mueller. We'll do Mueller real quick, this being Mueller time, of course. Paul Manafort has been indicted for the billionth time, oh, <laughs> again, yes. uh, what they call a superseding indictment for trying to interfere in his own uh, future prosecution. And then one Konstantin Klimenik has also been indicted, a right-hand man. Um, did I'm sure you saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Mr. Klimenik is like his Russian fixer, and we'll be very interested. I was reading about him before we... Uh, is he the, the Russian equivalent to uh, Cohen? You know... They're calling him the fixer. Imagine that, but but smart. Because he sounds like a really smart guy. Imagine well, Cohen with yeah, a brain. Yeah, isn't it sad that everyone on that side is much smarter than everyone that's supposed to be on our side? Yeah. This Klimenik is... A, it's wild. He's a Russian intelligence officer who was Manafort's right-hand man for like over 10 years. I mean... They call him former, but obviously there's, it's, yeah, there's no yeah. former. No. <laughs> so we're uh, very interested. He's, we, no one knows where he is. He's abroad somewhere, uh, but still, we're, uh, we were glad to see that. So now let's get to the um, North Korea, huh? <laughs> oh, wow. It's happening. You know, we, we kind of have to eat it. A few episodes back, we mm -hmm. were totally making fun about how they put out the coin, but then it was canceled. Yeah. And well, no, I just saw it on MSNBC and on CNN and on Fox. I watched, I changed around every channel. Wow. That, that's far more offensive than any NFL player taking a knee. It's conceivable that my coin will arrive just as the first <laughs> nuke, nuke goes off oh, somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Hey, the postman's here. Um, it's one thing to have the talks, but what did North Korea do to earn equal billing for their flag with the stars and stripes? Right. I mean, a guy was saying at the, a guy was saying at the convenience store before I came in here, it, it's like you're living in Back to the Future too. Yeah. Biff won. The timeline is all fucked up. Dennis Rodman is on CNN wearing a Make America Great Again hat crying. Yeah, and shamelessly plugging his cryptocurrency. <laughs> yeah, did you want to tell everyone about that? Because you had some unique oh, uh, information. Yeah. You all saw his uh, potcoin.com t-shirt. Um, so I have a, an acquaintance that was an addiction, is an addiction specialist and, um, Dennis Rodman is one of his patients and I, I am not breaking any sort of secret society AA thing because you saw them working together on celebrity rehab. So I got in touch with Bob Forrest, the man in the hat. And, yeah. um, yeah, this is what Bob clarified about, uh, Rodman's Dennis Rodman, the worm. His um, appearance on CNN this evening, and as the old man here, I got to put the glasses on to read off of my iPhone. No problem. And th this is Mueller time exclusive. Yeah. Um, so I had asked Bob um, if he saw the CNN appearance, and he says I saw it. And um, he goes on. He has ownership stake in Potcoin. It's a cryptocurrency company for pot revenue to be hidden from the feds. He is a champion. Wow. That's my guy. That's what Bob Forrest said. Now, there's a, there's a, a very strong bit of humor in there because Bob is a uh, massive Trump hater. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, points to Dennis Rodman for shamelessly plugging a company. I mean, it's okay. Trump does it all the time. So why shouldn't Rodman do it? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what we do here now, right? We but just plug our, our hustles. It's okay when Trump's friends um, shamelessly try to hide their money from the feds. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was pretty wild seeing his uh, our flag and their flag next to each other. The bottom line is, unless there's a total success, this is a disaster. Yeah. If something was to come out of this where they denuclearized, then I would be. I wouldn't give a shit whose flag was next to each other. Um, one of the discussions they were having on CNN, or excuse me, on MSNBC on their panel, they brought on a woman tonight who I have not seen before, but as a uh, Korean politics expert, mm -hmm. um, apparently there is um, some discrepancy over the American and the North Korean definition of denuclearization. Mm. Yeah. And what basically comes down to is if North Korea is going to denuclearize, well, what does that mean? What's the U.S. going to give up? Right. Well, Trump's definite. I, I heard that as well. It was, it was very interesting. You think that's the kind of thing they would work out ahead of time? But then again, this is the Trump administration. Well, there's a reason why no president before Trump has not had this meeting. Yeah. Yeah. 
Speaking of which, let's let's be clear about that meeting. That meeting, which is supposedly going on right now, it happened in secret. There's only four people in the meeting. One of them is a pathological liar. The other one is his translator who can't be trusted. Then you have Kim, who can't be trusted, and his translator. And um, on MSNBC, they did point out that these transla- translators there are, to, are there to translate. They are not doing double duty to take notes to be given to the rest of the world. They are there strictly to translate. Right. So um, there's no reason to believe anything out of anyone's mouths out of uh, what came out of the initial meeting before they had the bilateral meeting with the big table with, um, uh, right. you know, we, the, everybody. We don't know what's happening. there. They could go in there and play Halo 4 and eat pizza. And come back and just make up whatever they want. Yeah. And also, Kim, by the way, speaks English, whereas Trump doesn't even speak English. <laughs> so, Kim, among many reasons, has, a, has an advantage. Well, yeah. Right? Now, um, when we did see them on camera doing the, um, the, the little handshake in front of the flags, mm. uh, the, and they had the pool spray from the, the, the traveling press, uh, let's see. No, there was no English spoken by um, Kim Jong-un. Yeah, they. Uh, I heard an expert says that he was because of the schools he went to. He uh, speaks English, and they heard him. They heard him say hello to Trump in English and some other things. Well, I could probably say hello to, to Kim Jong Un, North Korean, if you told me the word. But yeah. Well, it sounds like he went to Western schools for a um, long time. I, I've read he. I believe he went to a school in Switzerland. Yeah. Okay, I saw something odd. If you go to um, the Wikipedia page for Kim Jong Un, I looked this up last night. I wanted mm-hmm. to see how old he is. There are three different ages listed for him. There is an age attributed. It's 32, 33, or 34. And North Korea, South Korea, and United States all have three different birth dates that they believe are mm. Kim Jong-un's birth date. Well, our president is, is five. So <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least he only has one birth date on. Um, okay. okay. By the way, his birthday is this week. Mm. We're going to hear about that in two days. Mm, fantastic. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to that. I'm not a fan of people's making a big deal out of their birthday to begin with. Right. Well, here at Mueller yeah. time, uh, we did have a very exciting thing happen. I haven't told you because it's a surprise. Oh, what? what's up? Well, let me just play this music. I'd like to, uh, in honor of what happened, I'm going to play a little bit of uh, a very historic song here. We here at Mueller Time would like to celebrate our first plays in Russia. Oh, wow. <laughs> we, we res- this is the Russian anthem. anthem. Yes, well, I yeah, want to know why and, I recognize it. Because we're all going to be singing this in the year. Well, yeah, but um, anybody that grew up a fan of the WWF in the early to mid-80s <laughs> knows Nikolai Volkov would sing this before every match and get booed out of the arena. It was the funniest thing. I loved it. We received three hits on our podcast from Russia. Wow. And I think since all of us in America are going to be singing this in the next couple of years, we just wanted to celebrate that. All right, that's enough out of that. Oh, if you, I wish you would have played a Nikolai Volkov rendition. That would have been rad. I, I'll find I, you one. <laughs> we'll do it for another week. I'm not, I don't want to. I don't want to um, embarrass myself, but I, I don't even know who that is. He and the Iron Sheik were WWF tag team champions in the '80s. Oh, nice. Yes. Wow. Well, we'll, we'll definitely have to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just love that I can play that through. I'm still excited that I can. We have a computer now. I can, I can play different songs, and commercials. I've been ripping all kinds of stuff off there. All right, so I guess we pretty much hit that North Korean summit, huh? Well, uh, it's still happening right now, and yeah. we're, you know, we're going to be talking about this in the weeks to come. Yeah, we're going to be we're going to be talking about a lot of that stuff. Yeah, but look, Trump gave everything away. We have got uh, America got nothing in return for this awesome piece of propaganda. This propaganda gift given to North Korea, given to Kim Jong Un. Yeah. He has pictures of now of him with Trump, with Trump giving a thumbs up in front of a whole row of American and North Korean flags. Yeah, and for what? Now he's seen it as as an equal. Well, that was the whole point of never giving North Korea this meeting to begin with, because they are not equal. And yeah. well, now Trump gave that away. For what? For nothing. Yeah. To own the libs. Yeah. He did it to own the libs. Yeah, we're, and we're going to be... Giving uh, concessions to a murderous regime to own the libs. Owning liberals. Yeah, we're going to be uh, playing a lot more clips I've been gathering, because uh, as we've talked about on a previous episode, that's very important to these right-wingers. Owning... The world can blow up, but as long as a liberal is owned, a right-winger gets its wings. <laughs> uh, that is their jam. And a lot of the... I've been explaining this to a lot of... This is a younger people thing. 
Actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. I, I have a theory about owning liberals. I want to run this by you. All right. Because I think I f- figured it out. Okay. All right. I'm going to run through one or two, three points. You tell me if you agree or not. First off, about 90% of those who want to own liberals are are men. Would you agree? Um, maybe not quite that much, but it's it's definitely a higher male percentage. Leaning, yeah. Fair mm-hmm. enough. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. And of those people, do you think most of them are, are younger? Not not like we're not talking about like oh, seventy well, year olds or sixty year olds. Look, I see a lot of uh, yeah twenty something right wing nut jobs on Twitter. So okay, yeah. Here's my theory on owning liberals. I think it's all about these young, fucked up guys' inability to get women. No, well, definitely, yeah. You you think so? Yeah. I think that they don't know how to function in society. They don't know how to get women, and the rage has to get focused somewhere else. Yeah. And where do you focus your rage? Well. You just pick you pick a victim, uh, uh, you pick a liberal. <laughs> I think that's what it's on about. Twitter. Yeah, yeah, and I, I go think go make a meme. If we can just figure out how to get these guys, how to how they can we can get them to talk to the opposite sex, maybe we can just get them to. Although it would be bad for our show because we love mocking them. Um. So good. Now that we figured that yeah. out, I'm going to send that to them. Well, let's see what happens when they grow up in their mid thirties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, if we're still here 10 years from now. Yeah, right. Jeez. Dennis Rodman, please save us, Dennis Rodman. Okay, literally, Dennis Rodman is the only mutual friend to the two most dangerous world leaders we've ever seen mm-hmm. in our lifetimes. Yeah. They have one mutual friend, and it's Dennis Rodman. Is he really friends with Trump? I mean, I know he's friends with Kim, but... Well, he's a, he was on The Apprentice, and now he's out there with him. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's going to be one of Trump's buddies, absolutely. Yeah. He absolutely is. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. It's frightening. It's not fantastic. What's wrong with you, Eric? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think there was a little bit of sarcasm there. Yeah. Okay. Just, just a little. I think I got on a little rant enough there where you had to pull my uh, fader back. I did have to pull your yes. fader. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting good at the live mixing. All right. At, even if the world blows up, I have a career as a engineer. We need to trust Dennis Rodman. I put a couple of articles up on the Mother Time Facebook page if you guys want to get up there and subscribe, some relevant content. One is, I don't know if you've seen this, are you aware that the it looks like Brexit was funded by Russians? Well, yeah. Oh, well then forget about <laughs> well, that. No, no, second. please, no, no, I mean, yeah, no, 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 like no shit. But, I wasn't. Yeah, but now, oh yeah, no, that's, well, that was just assumed. Well, yeah, I guess I thought maybe they were involved, but there's a, there's a story in The right, Guardian. Well, what, what new evidence is out? Oh no! It was just uh, basically the guy who paid for it. Uh, it's been s- the information surfaced that he took like five or six trips to Russia. They offered him some kind of gold mine, like literally a mine where there's gold. Wow! Uh, and he and Nigel Farage, who was the, mm. the British politician behind it, uh, they it sounds like worked in concert with these Russians in a way that no one realized. All right. So does Naj- Nigel Farage now co-own this Russian mine? I mean, uh, that that seems like what they, the end result should be. Supposedly, the deal fell through. Oh, that's but what Brexit still exited. Right, right. Yeah, and they said this. Uh, so the Russians got what they wanted and didn't have to give up their gold mine. Mm, really? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. Trump's playbook. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a Donald J. Trump deal. Well, where did he learn it? And then I put up a second one. We already knew this already, but the NRA, which was the largest backer of Trump as a group. The leaders of the NRA made a number of even more undisclosed trips to Russia, uh, a country with no gun culture at all. And then that money was funneled, I'm not going to say allegedly, I think it was definitely funneled, to Trump. So that that all-American organization, the NRA, is in deep on this too. Yeah. Can you imagine that day when Mueller starts dropping all these indictments? It's okay for one of the board members of the NRA to describe a um, a female American politician as the C word. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. When it's a Republican that does it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, a MAGA. Mm-hmm. A MAGA asshole. Yeah. Hey, I know a lot of people in uh, Canada listen to this show, uh, which is awesome. So I just I didn't want to take you know the incident happened with I know it's just. I just want to like, you know, for what it's worth, just like apologize because I don't know how aware people are that you guys understand we hate this guy, right? We like he's he's we're we're being occupied by a terrorist right now, president. And I just want everyone to be aware of Canada, wherever else. We hate this guy. We didn't vote for him. We we were taken over in a coup. So sorry about what happened. You're, 
<laughs> You're having to apologize I know. to Canada. I know. What's going on like, with this world? You guys have an awesome president, which I think is Prime also. Minister. Oh, yeah, my bad. Mm-hmm. Um, Trudeau is, is awesome. He's, um, I, I think that's part of why Trump mocked him, because he's everything that Trump isn't. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, so those 20-something uh, lib owners, you know what they like to call um, Justin Trudeau? They like to call him a soy boy. Oh, Have really? you seen that term floated around? What is that? Well, it's basically what all the alt-right nut jobs like to use in place of um, the other F word. Since you can't call a dude, oh, you F word, not, not, I'm oh. not saying fucker. Right. Yeah. Since you can't call him that, they now call him soy boy because it's effeminate. But like, oh, because like a, like a soy drink or something? Um, yeah. So like Justin Trudeau, a guy who literally has like, in terms of the, the genetic lottery that you can hit in this life, he hit all of it. Looks, brains, mm. his status in life. He's got a beautiful wife. He's smart. Yeah. So they're gonna mock him. Yeah. Right. But they can't own him. Right. <laughs> you're li- you're living in your mom's basement on Reddit, but I have a hard time believing you haven't um, even yourself been re- called a soy boy anywhere on Twitter. You've not seen that term. I've I've been called a lot of things in this life, but I've I have not been called a soy boy. You'll, you'll see soy boy now that I've pointed it out to you. Maybe when I start trolling more of the people that you troll, okay, the, yeah, like the those Daily Wire and uh, assholes, yeah. Well, they you think they'll? they'll oh, that's me. where that's where I hear it. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, guys, again, thank, thanks for listening up there in Canada. And again, um, yeah, we love Canada. We always yeah, have. we do. Yeah, sorry about that, man. Like, <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, what else can we say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh. I know. I know it's pretty. It's pretty wild. That one photograph that came out of the G7 summit, where all all the world leaders are just standing around Trump, and he's pouting like a little child. And a mm-hmm. yeah, oh wow, that's just the that's photo of the year so far. Uh, let's knock out the number one grifter, other than uh, Trump, of course, uh, which is Scott Pruitt. Oh yeah, <laughs> Scott Pruitt is that guy is shameless. Yeah. Yeah. He needs to work in the music industry. You can get away with that behavior in the music business. Well, I guess he used to before um, you know, people stopped buying records. But yeah. yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because it brings up a bigger point, which is an honest question. Why do these people go into government in the first place? Yeah. I mean, if you want to steal and lie and cheat and get all the trappings of... Uh, you can. There's the okay, well, other in, businesses. In private business, CEOs can get away with that kind of behavior right. where just treating yourself on the company dime. You could do that at a private business. Um, it's not against the law. It might be against company policy. And then, right. you know, then there's ways around that. It doesn't really work that way with the government. And, right. Um, why, why, is, why does Scott Pruitt get to think that he can go send his assistant out to go buy gifts at what, fancy stores in Manhattan right. or, or D.C.? What, I, what I'd really like to hear, if there's a recording of it, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear the conversation where he tried to use his weight as head of the EPA to get his wife a Chick-fil-A franchise. Um. Did we only get a transcript or was there a recording of that? I think Rachel Maddow show played the recording of that call. Are you serious? I, I, I don't hold me to it. That was a week ago. I mean, that which was I, like, you know, that's like eight dog years in Trump land. Trump land. Yeah. Uh, I will look it up after um, after we're done. And if I can find the, that video, I will post it on the Mola Time Facebook page. I just want to know how, how that's even leveraged. Like, hi, hi, this is. The head of the EPA. Can you give my wife a Chick Fil A? All right. Well, well, no. That's not exactly how it went. Now, if you now, Rachel definitely gave the transcript. Uh-huh. Um, she did this whole thing. Um, I think it started with calls between assistants or lower level staffers, oh. and it was pitched as a business opportunity. And so it's the EPA calling the the top CEO of Chick Fil A with a business opportunity. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the CEO of um, so Chick Fil A, I guess, wanted to think the best and wasn't thinking it was some self serving nonsense. Uh, and then when it finally got down to, well, yeah, we want to. It was like several messages in before Scott Pruitt or his assistant admitted, oh yeah, his wife wants to get a um, a franchise. Yeah. And then as it turns out, it's not like just anyone can get a Chick Fil A franchise. Right. They don't give those to just anybody. And yeah, well, he was looking for special treatment. First of all, you have to be a, a Christian, and these people are definitely not oh, that. I am totally setting aside right now all of uh, <laughs> yeah, no, the political nonsense of what goes on at Chick-fil-A. Yeah, yeah. No, if you or I thought, hey, well, we can make money being Chick-fil-A owners. Now, um, let's go say we even converted to the kind of Christianity you need mm. to convert to. There is a, there's a massive competition to be right. the Chick-fil-A franchise owner. Right. So Scott Pruitt wanted his wife to jump to the head of the line. And That's I, what that was about. And I was reading about it. Technically, it's interesting because they're not even really franchises. 
Because yeah. a franchise, which is a whole other story, mm-hmm. which I would like to talk about another time, but there's some degree of autonomy. Mm-hmm. It's really, you're just a manager. Yeah. They can, they run everything, you know. But yeah, what can we say? Mm. Hey, speaking of owning the libs. Okay, oh, well, hold on. What can you say? What, the creepy part, though, wanting to own a Trump hotel, mat- used hotel, Trump hotel mattress. Yeah. What the hell is That's fucking I, weird. Excuse my language. It's like, I. I only have so much brain power to devote to this. I, I agree with you. It's what? Yeah. And I, I thought I, I looked That's at just, that. Ew. Yeah. I, I looked at that and I was like, I'm moving on because I just I, I can't. That was before the Chick Fil A nonsense broke. Hey, let's give a shout out right now to a guy who gets it. And I'm gonna play this, and everyone heard this, and this is a guy who gets it, really. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert De Niro. I'm going to say one thing. Fuck Trump. Yeah. Oh, you have. I haven't heard the uncensored audio. That's yeah. awesome. That's a guy who gets it. I didn't just play that because it's Robert De Niro. That's a guy who gets it. Yeah. One more time. I like this part. Wait. He goes... Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a standing ovation, isn't it? Yeah, and he explains it here. He kind of goes and... no longer down with Trump. It's fuck Trump. That's what I'm talking about. That guy gets it. Yeah. And if I could rewind fast enough, I would have played the other part again. But yeah, it's no longer down with Trump. It's fuck Trump. Okay, now he had some backlash today in media. He did not have Samantha B. Michelle Wolf type backlash, though. What's that? Yeah, I heard some people... Um, yeah, Why? Yeah, I heard some people talking about that with the the male female issue. Mm. That is interesting. I, look, I I have no problem. And I'm I would proudly say the same things myself as Michelle Wolf, as Robert De Niro, and as Samantha B. Why didn't De Niro get the same amount of backlash? Yeah, well, I think that's that's a fair point. Yeah, and I also think De Niro, he, I don't know, and I know he wouldn't apologize either. Of course can, not. Yeah. Yeah. So that was just. And where are you going to fire him from? That's true. <laughs> Right, the Tonys. I mean, uh, well, I mean, is he? I, I don't even know why he's on. The, okay, okay. By the way, I recorded the Tonys on my DVR mm-hmm. for the first time ever mm-hmm. because Bruce Springsteen. Oh, no, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, they're giving him a special award for his Springsteen on Broadway. It's still on my DVR. I haven't actually watched it yet. It's so awesome. Like I kind of do want to hear that again. I'm gonna say one thing. Fuck Trump. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, now, everything I read about that was um, it made it, it, it got censored on the air, even live, yeah. like on the seven second delay. So I have to ask, how did you get the uncensored audio? Was it, did it leak today or did somebody put it on Twitter? Well, um, I contacted WikiLeaks <laughs> uh, through an intermediary. No, I just got it off YouTube. <laughs> okay. It's out there. Good. Yeah. Good. But, but in all, all, all jokes aside, it's like every, in, t- in terms of everyone doing their part in this nightmare that we're in, which is why we created this show. Uh, that was that's a man doing his part. Yeah, I heard a lot, there were a lot of people saying, "Well, you know, like how it's a waste of time; it doesn't matter, or whatever." It's like, no, no, no. he just told the president of the United States to go fuck himself, mm-hmm. and he's a famous actor. That did matter. That did matter. Yeah, well, Trump will hear him say that. Right, Trump won't hear you or I say it, and it pisses them off. Yeah, and it hurt. It it's it's hurtful, mm-hmm. and that's what you want. You want to hurt these people, you know. You want to. That's I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it, but it works. I know it works. It's swearing on stage to own the right wing nut jobs. Right. Like the Tonys, <laughs> like they this this drives these people crazy. It's it's a yeah. fucking musical theater show. Mm-hmm. Like they're already going crazy. And then yeah. on top of that, <laughs> it's an icon who everybody loves. So no matter how much they say they don't, everyone loves Robert De Niro. Yeah, you know what they will say or probably I'm sure someone said this somewhere online today. Robert De Niro was virtue signaling. Probably. Yeah. It's like remember when Hannity got called out by Ted Koppel? Did you see how hurt? What for what? Which thing? It was an interview with the two of them, and okay. and he said, uh, "Hannity goes, hey, let me ask you, do you think I'm bad for America?" And Cobble's like, "Yeah, yeah, wow. I do." When was this? I don't remember. It was, this. It was a couple was years ago, ago. Okay. and you could tell as because he was a broadcaster, man. Yeah, that come from up here. That yeah, that hurt Hannity, and I'm yeah. not saying it changed Hannity because he's still the same stupid asshole he's always been, but that made that had some kind of effect. Yeah, I you know. So anyway, um, well, look, Hannity's in just as deep as anybody else with all this mess now, too. Right. He's got to be scared shitless. He should be very scared. Yeah. Because Michael Cohen's day in court is coming. 
And then Michael Cohn is because he's facing 8 billion years in prison. Oh, um, we had the episode where I was saying there was that date coming up of June 15th, and I didn't know exactly what it was uh-huh. for. Well, that's this Friday, June 15th. That is the date that um, Cohen and Cohen's lawyers have to say what they believe is or is not um, admissible. Uh-huh. And they're going to get all rejected on everything. Yeah. 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 So, that- um, and if they don't actually, um, by that date, turn in their list or whatever, it's like, it's all going to be all, ev- everything that was collected in the raid on his office. I, I heard he has 14 lawyers. Can you fucking believe that? Who, who, who has 14 lawyers in life? Most people don't have one lawyer in their whole life. MAGA, my attorneys got attorneys. <laughs> oh, that's good. Did you come up with that? I can't say I did. I saw some somebody on Twitter, and I've reposted that numerous times on Twitter. Uh, all right, check this out, man. I don't know if you heard this. So Facebook is now, because of because they've fucked all our lives up with this election, now they're uh, starting to make ads to... to uh... We came here for the friends. Oh, dude, I see this on TV every day. <laughs> And I, that ad bugs me. We fucked our lives up. Yeah. Yeah. Can you oh. believe that? You know, um, for years, long before the 2016 election, I have been using Adblock Plus on my computer, mm. and I never saw any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I know wh- what are fake accounts. I would see fake news. I would block that account long before fake news became a thing that blew up the election. Right. Um, so, yeah, you know, I understand all this nonsense, nonsense happens on Facebook, but I don't see a lot of it for the simple fact that I, I use an ad blocker. Well, during the election also, because we live in California and because we're not fucking morons, we weren't targets of that property. Well, very true. We, I, well, I, I saw plenty of it reposted from people right. in swing states. Absolutely. Though. I, that stuff got seen. Uh, right. We did, cause, and that's another amazing thing. We never saw a single... Hmm piece of propaganda like that no well i could you can't necessarily say that we didn't get the targeted ads uh but that was only one aspect of it because all the fake news stories that went out on all the weird news sites that were written out of lithuania right and got spread around we saw those and it's possible yeah. that we saw one of the they did target left-wing group mm. groups and there was one called like blacktivist or something yeah. and things like that that target progressives so yeah. it's possible that but you and i are both well, look, we weren't in Michigan, so we didn't see the worst of it. Yeah, we didn't show up at a fucking rally because some <laughs> some douchebag in uh, St. Petersburg told us to. Oh, oh. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, that Facebook guy. Uh, we're sorry, commercial. That air. I mean, at, it airs on like every other commercial break right now in MSNBC. It's relentless. Oh, hey, I'll put this up on the the Maritime Facebook. Did you see this thing about the Florida background checks? Uh, Did- oh, that somebody just said screw it and didn't do them. And then everybody got cleared, that thing? For one year. Yeah. The state of Florida issued a gun permit to anyone. This this should be, in any other time, this would be the national go-to news story. Mm. Did you see why? No. Shane? What's the, what, what, why? Why did so, it happen? First of all, apparently one lady's in charge of this, which is just amazing. That sounds like, talk about some kind of like Soviet bureaucracy. And they said, um, uh, ma'am, why did you issue a concealed carry permit to anybody who just filled out the application? I couldn't keep up with the applications and I lost my login code. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Are you fucking kidding me? Like, that's the best you could do? It's okay because she's a Florida Republican. Oh, I'm sure she'll be in the Trump cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. She probably got promoted already. She's our new Secretary of State. Yeah, she believes in the Second Amendment. Yeah. 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 You don't need a background check for your for your concealed carry. Right. No. For a whole year. No. Anybody who applied in Florida got a permit. So if um, someone who, uh, let's say, is a felon and is not supposed to pass a background check, a felon could have gotten a concealed carry. Like literally anybody. Yeah. A fucking like serial killer could have sent an application. So all those um, scary Middle Eastern terrorists that come over the Mexican border, if they made it over the Mexican border um, through Arizona, through New Mexico, through Texas, all the way down to Florida, they could have got a concealed carry. Man, I got I to gotta tell you, man, these these stories that are coming out about this, this stuff about what they're what sessions and trump are doing to these refugees oh no yeah i've been meaning to bring that up on the show and we 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 don't have many, much time but maybe we'll close with this i i just can't believe what i'm seeing uh one of the first things this is like the least of the whole problem i i really hated the way there's the um, when jeff sessions gave an outdoor speech to basically outlining the um the immigration policy mm. He was referring to children brought across the border by their parents um, as um, smuggling children. 
right. if you were smuggling children is how he would describe it wasn't if it, it's not bringing your children right. it's smuggling children and it really dehumanized them it's it's disgusting well that's that's something that it reminds me of something like frank luntz used to do the the great republican word master mm-hmm. change use language you know as propaganda well that's exactly what the use of smuggling children is yeah. use use of that phrase yeah jeff sessions the the guy who conspired with a foreign national foreign country to throw the election is the is the big law law abiding guy. I love it. Yeah. Look, this is no joke. These guys are moving the line today every time. Today they announced now they're not going to take in asylum seekers who are victims of domestic violence. Mm-hmm. That wasn't said in the campaign. No. They're moving the line, and everybody needs to uh, like I keep saying this show. Everyone needs to do their part because these guys right now it's immigrants. What happens when they start looking at American citizens? Yeah, well, that, that'll happen in yeah. term two. So ha- we got to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. happens next? Do you, can you imagine how entitled Trump will feel if he actually succeeds in a second term? Right. Yeah, yeah that's when the really frightening stuff is going to go down, and we've got to stop that now. Right. What happens when they start saying, hey, do you know any illegal aliens? That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, slowly the line gets moved a little farther mm-hmm. and farther. So yeah, you're you're damn right about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, it, 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 there's too much. Yeah, yeah. It's well, only Monday. Yeah, it's only Monday. So um, go ahead and uh, if you could uh, follow us or hit us up on social media. Uh, I'm Eric Levay, E R I C L E V A I at Mr. Chris Carey on Twitter. Yeah, just uh, send us a message. Let us know what's going on. If you have any ideas on how all of us can get out of this alive, <laughs> please. Uh, leave it in a comment on iTunes. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, if you guys could uh, also leave us a review, that would be awesome. I really appreciate well, that. The comment would count as a review if you put five stars. Does whatever. it? Okay. Well, if you, you're, well, you can write whatever you want in the comment box. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Hit us up. And um, as always, y'all, we'll uh, see you next week. Thanks again.